Hi everyone, today is March 28th, 2018, and this is my video for the very most important transits for April. So I hope you enjoy this. Get your coffee, your tea, your wine, and sit back with me. This will be about 20 minutes long. And I've got mine right here. Yay, I panicked there. So this is a lot of information to get through, but I want you to have it. And, um, you know, April is really the first fairly normal month of the year for the moon cycles, but it's still kind of wonky until April 15th when Mercury finally goes direct. Hasn't it been a terrible Mercury in retrograde for most people? Mm. I can't begin to tell you about my clients' lives and how much my clients have been struggling with this um, particular Mercury in retrograde, maybe because it's in Aries, so it's super strong. But the moon is probably my most favorite thing to look at in a chart. And I love moon transits because they happen frequently and they happen fast. And you get lots and lots of different aspects in a moon cycle. And, you know, the moon changes every two and a half days and we get a, a new moon sign. And so we get lots of little aspects within those two and a half days. So I love studying the moon. So in January, you know, we had two full moons and in February, there was no full moon at all. And in March, there were two full moons again. And in April, there's just one full moon, but and it's in Scorpio and it ekes in on April 30th. I mean, it's barely in there, but it is. And um, this moon, this, uh, this full moon is going to make us very, very aware of our desires and what we want. Um, Okay, so let me just scroll down here and get some of my notes for you so I can talk fast and furious. So take notes, but as I mentioned, you know, I want you to circle April 15th on your calendar, but um, that's when Mercury goes direct. But on the 17th and on the 22nd, <laughs> Saturn on the 17th and Pluto on the 22nd go retrograde. So we will go inward. We will have a feeling of going inward and they're happening in the sign of Capricorn. So this is a time for deep internal change, a psychological change, if you will. And it's a time when we really need to get more organized and more disciplined around our goals. So you need to get really real about what you want. No fooling around right now. You have to get really serious. So that's Saturn going retrograde on the 17th and Pluto going retrograde on the 22nd, but Mercury goes direct on the 15th. Mm. On April 1st, the sun is going to conjunct Mercury in Aries. So this is a time for bright ideas and vibrant thoughts. And if you can think it, you can do it. So put your thoughts into action on this day. And um, on the 2nd, Mars is going to conjunct Saturn in Capricorn. And it can be a really super challenging day. It can really ignite your frustrations. It can make you feel stuck in traffic, both metaphorically and literally, or liter literally and figuratively. Or if you have elevated energy and really positive thoughts, it can also give you great stamina and patience to complete just the hardest of tasks that you're facing right now. So how you approach this transit you know, and how you use the energy really does matter. So if it's a day of frustrations, I'm just going to tell you, and Mercury is still retrograde. So elevate yourself and push through the resistance that you feel on that day and persevere and dedicate yourself to your higher self, your higher causes this transit can make you feel so angry and so resentful, and sometimes it can make you even feel revengeful. So try to channel your energy into um, a higher place. Try to use your energy in a really physically exhausting or challenging or creative way. Take on a really creative project or a really physically demanding project so your energy kind of gets exhausted through that channel rather than sitting around being bored with the frustrations that might occur in your life. 
So on April 4th, Mercury in Aries is squaring or in negative aspect to Mars in Capricorn. So this is a day where you're probably not going to get your way. So just be okay with it. You know, not every day do we get to have our way, right? Gosh, shoot, darn it. <laughs> On the 5th, Mercury in um, Aries is also, let's just see, I said square Mars on the 4th, but it squares Saturn on the 5th. So the 4th and 5th are kind of tough days, but um on April 7th, I happen to love this transit. Venus is in Taurus and it tries, trines. It's in great aspect to Saturn in Capricorn. So, you know, Capricorn and, and Taurus really love each other. And Venus and Saturn are interesting together because this is a great day to commit to someone or something. This is a great day to make a financial business investment. This is a day to really deeply invest in your resources and your loved ones. This is a blessing of a day. This is like love glued together or love fused. If Mercury wasn't in retrograde, I would say this would be a great marriage day. But with Mercury in retrograde, I won't say that. Um, so just be very careful if you do make a business investment or if you do make a commitment to your loved one. Hopefully the loved one that you're making a commitment to, you met before Mercury went into retrograde. And if you did, then that's okay. If this is a business deal that you designed and developed inside Mercury in retrograde, uh, not so hot, not so good. Um, better if it happened earlier in March, so um, before March 23rd. So um, or let's see what day. Gosh, I forget the very first day that Mercury went into retrograde. Was it? Yeah, was it the 23rd? I think it was. I can't remember. Bad astrology on my part. I can't keep all the transits in my head. But basically, if a business deal um, is something that you want to invest in right now, let's say you want to buy a house. Well, if you made the house, if you if you saw the house, if you already made an offer on the house before Mercury went into retrograde, this is a great day to sign papers or complete the project. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic day. That's April 7th. Moving forward, because we have the whole rest of the month to do, April 11th, the sun is in Aries and it's squaring Pluto and Capricorn. Are you seeing a theme here? Mars, Saturn, Pluto, Capricorn. Oh my God. So this is a day of power struggles. Watch the news on this day. Turn your TV on. Be tuned in. Be tuned in to big government because Capricorn and Pluto both represent big government. And I think we're going to see that big government is in total conflict with the real world. And I think you're going to see that um, there is just enormous, enormous power struggles and fighting and rage. When the sun is in Aries and it's squaring Pluto in Capricorn, mm, not so happy. That's on the 11th. But also on the 11th, which I really do like, so there is a silver lining here, is Venus is in Taurus and it's in happy aspect to Mars and Capricorn. So on the 11th, it also can end in a really sexy, hot love day. Love and life go together in this aspect. So there is a silver lining. So hopefully on a personal level, you'll feel that positive transit, even if the world around you is going crazy. Um, on the 12th, this, well, this is in competition for my favorite day of the month. Venus is in Taurus and it's sextiling or it's in happy aspect to Neptune and Pisces. And this is an exalted love day where you're being asked to elevate yourself, to reach out to others in need, adopt a pet, rescue a friend. This is a gloriously gorgeous, exalted day where you will, you have the opportunity to feel divine love, nirvana, exalted love. This is a such a romantic, poetic, beautiful, gorgeous, sensual, uh, mystical, mystical love day. So do something extraordinary on the 12th. Reach out to others in need. Um, really put romance at the center of your life on the 12th. So April 14th is a pretty big day. Um, Jupiter is in Scorpio and it's in sextile aspect to Pluto in Capricorn, which is a good aspect. 
So ask yourself today, circle your calendar. What do you want to change about yourself? Embrace each challenge in your life as as an opportunity for deep self-transformation. This is an amazing, amazing and powerful transit and it lasts all month and it's absolutely direct on the 14th. So enjoy, enjoy the next two weeks. This aspect can bring you so much success through positive change. You, you don't even have to force anything. These changes just can happen effortlessly if you're coming from your best self and your highest intentions, not your ego. So check your ego at the door. But right now in your life, you're most likely going to be given a new opportunity to increase your power and influence your world on, on the spiritual pl plane um, with your faith. And again, it is effortless, you know. There's a spiritual and personal platform here that are talking to each other. So uh, the, the two can go together. So what do you believe in? Align with it and watch yourself personally uh, redeem the rewards of that faith. So also don't be surprised if your pockets expand. Money is going to find you on this day. So don't be surprised. If you also receive sort of a bonus or a commission or a more um, a, a more advancement in your career, basically this is a time when really, really powerful forces are working behind the scenes to promote you and to promote your life and to put you in a higher place in your life. And it can be so deeply rewarding. So don't let this day go by without really recognizing it and stepping into the gratitude for this beautiful, glorious day. You could get um, a promotion with more leadership, um, with a more of a leadership role, or if you're an entrepreneurial uh, person, you could actually create more of a leadership role for yourself. You could really step out. And also your portfolio or your investments might really mature on this day. They might um, really expand, which is also very exciting. Who doesn't like that? And if you don't have a portfolio, your piggy bank might. Um, so I understand not everybody has some giant portfolio, but your, you know, go, go look at maybe the change in your uh, piggy bank and take it down to what's it called, Coinstar, and dump it all in and get, get your money in your pocket. It's, it's a day when, um, it's a day when you really might be surprised. So initiate positive change to advance your causes in life and maybe also other people or other groups or other organizations, you could benefit them as well. Um, okay, we talked a little bit about the moon and about Mercury, but now let's talk a little bit about Mars. Mars aspects last for at least one week and they are, um, they're really powerful. Um, and I think there's four significant Mars aspects this month. I'm going to mostly talk about three, but um, I think that the next aspect that I'm going to talk about is the most important aspect or it's it's one of the stronger aspects um, of the month. So Mars represents taking action, getting things done, making things happen. It's it's talking about your life force energy, your chi, your motivation, how you move throughout the world, how you attack your problems and challenges, how you overcome obstacles, your drive, your will, your power, your willpower, your sex, your drive, your sex drive. Let's take a look at it. So also on April 14th, Mars is in Capricorn in a good aspect, sextile, to Neptune in Pisces. So this is also a super romantic placement where sensuality and dreams and sex collide in a good way. So it's sort of like sexually romantic, if I could say Mars is sex and Neptune is romance. Um, and it's a time right now when people will just be magnetically drawn to you. 
This is a time when you may also put your spiritual practice into action and you'll attract people who resonate to you on a deep, deep soul level. So this isn't a superficial transit. This is a transit where you could really even attract your soulmate. And it's when you have a super sensitivity towards the wishes and the desires of other people. And you may want to serve those people in need. You may truly want to put your drive, your energy into um, assisting or helping others. Basically, it's a transference of love. It doesn't have to be sexual, but because it's Mars, it can be. Um, and it can also work really well in platonic relationships. This can really result in charity, um, doing something, do a, doing a charitable act. This could be um, helping others um, manifest their wishes and dreams and hopes and goals or yourself. Um, this could also be a time when you are very healing towards self or others. Um, this could be a time when you really help others create tonics or tinctures or massage or energy work or just a hug actually heals another soul where physical touch can actually heal. So, you know, maybe you'll be giving a massage for charity. <laughs> Who deserves your charitable massage, huh? Who do you want to give that to? That's who you should be spending time with on that day. So April 15th, Mercury goes direct. We know that. Um, let's see. But on April 15th, there is also something really incredible. It's like we're going to just spring into action because Mercury goes direct and we're getting our new moon in Aries. And anytime there's a new moon in Aries, it's high voltage. So it's at 6.57 p.m. L.A. time, 9.57 p.m. New York City time. I don't know what it is in London or Australia, but I'm sure you guys can do the math on that. Um, now, of course, you now know if you're this deep into my videos that new moons are critical, they're absolutely fantastic times for initiating anything new. So this is a really great time for you to manifest your desires, your hopes, your goals, your wishes. What the hell do you want? Go grab it, go get it, do whatever you need to do with this new moon energy to implement the tasks and the tiny uh, steps you need to take to manifest your greater good, your greater wish. Um, now, this is also a time when you really need to kind of think about what you need. What do you need in your life for you to benefit? Um, not what they need and not your charitable massage, if you will, for another's benefit. That was the last transit. This transit is about three things, you, you, and you. So what do you want to come into fruition for yourself? What serves you? This is a day where you don't need to feel sorry about being a little bit selfish with your prayers. So what's also interesting about this new moon is that it's also in conjunction with the sun and Uranus. Well, the, the new moon is sun conjunct, sun conjunct moon. So the sun and the moon are together. But Uranus is in there as well, right there in the mix. So you have the sun, the moon, and Uranus all together, dun, 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 in Aries. So it can feel doubly or triply exciting. So this is such an excellent, excellent aspect to have with the new moon. And it means you really will be ready for the change. You will be ready for something so brand new and the universe supports you in those changes. So you're going to break free from the old, boring, stagnant routines that you have in place. Forget the paperwork. Take off the shackles. And you're probably going to get an opportunity at this time to do something really exciting and super fun with tons and tons of electricity in it. So I can't wait to find out what your new moon transit with Uranus in there is going to bring you. And I'm excited for me too, um, because it's a me, me, me moon, right? So think about the risks that you want to take. Think about the changes that you want. Think about your desires and put them out there. Here's one thing I'm going to tell you. Don't wait for the aspect to happen to you. You grab the bull by the horns. You figure out what it is you want and you dive in. So if you use your energy in this aspect, you'll get better results. If you just sit around and wait for something to happen to you, who knows? Who knows? Because it's kind of like lightning strikes with the Uranus right there. And we don't want lightning to strike. We kind of want to tell the lightning bolt where to go. So harness the energy 
corral the energy, I should say, and, and speak to your guardian angels, your spirit guides, speak to God, speak to the universe and ask where you want this new, exalted, invigorating, exciting, effervescent energy to be applied in your life. Um, the universe actually really does listen. The universe does hear you. So use that to your advantage. See what is going to come through for you. But I want I want you to know that under this aspect, this, this new moon conjunct Uranus, don't be shocked if new brilliant insights find you. You may open up to a whole higher vibrational level, having more self-awareness, like who am I? What do I want? Who do I want to be in the world? And you may even develop a psychic or an intuitive sense or sensibility under this particular new moon transit. Remain really open-minded because this is a time for really elevated awareness and all kinds of quirky messages could come through for you right now. So be open to them. So on the 17th, moving along, Saturn goes into retrograde into Capricorn. I just talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a fancier cup for this video, <laughs> but Fiji water is the best water. It's perfectly pH balanced and everybody should be drinking Fiji water. Uh, they're not paying me for that little infomercial, but they should, right? Anyways, get yourself a bottle of Fiji water because it is so good. Um, Saturn retrograde. So you need to be more organized and disciplined around the 17th of April. Real freedom comes from learning how to not procrastinate. Real freedom comes from being disciplined and organized so you're not in a state of panic. Push through the barriers that are trying to block your goals. Push through the feeling of resistance that you're receiving right now and be relentless in learning your bigger karmic lessons right now. When Saturn goes retrograde, we go inward. We have an internal discipline. Um, and on the 17th, there's also a really exciting transit. I love this transit. Um, April's a great month. It's going to be an interesting month. It's going to be uh, fascinating. It's got all kinds of incredible energy and it's complex. But Venus is in Taurus and it's in happy aspect trying to Pluto in Capricorn. So it's a super sexy hot transit and it's going to it's going to add intensity and passion to your relationships. It's going to bring intense pleasure and joy at a really deep level. It's not superficial pleasure. It's not like a box of chocolates. It's like deep pleasure, super deep pleasure. I think you're going to feel um, more deeply in love with your loved one, or you're going to attract new deeper love. But um, if you already have a partner, you might see your partner in a new light, in a deeper light. Um, love and affection are off the hook right now. So this transit is sexual. It's mysterious. It's even karmic. It's a triple threat. So enjoy your odds go up. If you are in search of a romantic sexual partner right now, it's a good time to meet somebody new romantically who will most likely change your life forever. Um, and because this is such an intense transit, you might find that your new love is, um, truly, truly meets you at a soul level. Again, it's not a superficial, uh, it's not a superficial sexy hot transit. It's a deep sexy hot transit. Um, on the 20th, dun, 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 the sun enters Taurus. So Taurus is stable and patient and practical and hard working and beautiful. And these are the qualities that you're going to see um, in the following 30 days, April 20th, starting on April 20th through around the 21st of May. And your level of dedication um, really plays a big role in the happiness of, uh, or in the success and happiness for the rest of the year. So um, take Taurus kind of seriously and do your do your work. Um, so Pluto, we talked about that on the 22nd of April goes into retrograde until September 30th. So April 22nd to September 30th, Pluto's in retrograde in Capricorn. So there's this deep inner transformation that's really necessary right now. You need to change your perspective, your psychological perspective, and look at where your beliefs might be a little too rigid. So you may need to reevaluate what you actually believe in 
you may really get to understand the deeper psychological truths right now that are going on with the people around you. You might get an x-ray vision with this aspect. April 24th, Mars is in Capricorn. And it's in a really good aspect. It's in a sextile aspect to Jupiter and Scorpio. And it is so awesome. It is probably the very best Mars aspect in April. So you're going to feel strong and determined and happy and courageous. And this is a success transit, a success transit. So go for it, whatever it is. This is a transit that is just a golden nugget. And um, bet on yourself on this at this time. You know, it, it, this is a time when you want to bet on you. It is a good luck day. It's a great day for competition. It's a great day for business affairs. They will go really, really well today. This is also a great day to attract and seduce the opposite sex. It's a very big sexual energy day, romantic energy day. This is a play hard, work hard on this day, and the payout is sensational. It's a great day. I hope it goes well for you. After all that buildup, Write me back in the comments and let me know how your day went. On the 24th, Venus is going to enter Gemini, which is really fun. It's a good time to meet with friends and communicate, have dinner parties, go out, dance, network, talk, socialize, make new business contacts, get new business cards made and pass them out everywhere. It's a great way to communicate your information. It's a great day to really put yourself out there on social media in a bigger way. It's a really bubbly place for Venus. It's a happy place for Venus. It's a place where um, there's tons of curiosity, learn something new that you've always been in love with. Um, it's a great time to communicate with loved ones in all different ways. Um, call your mom on April 24th and tell her that you love her. Call your siblings, call your, call your parents, call your loved ones, call your kids, send old fashioned letters. Um, April 26th, the last Mars aspect that I want to mention. So let's take a peek at this April 26th. Dun, dun, dun. Mars is conjunct Pluto and Capricorn, and it can bring an incredible desire for success and ambition and power. Um, in, the public eye, in the public eye, we're going to see selfishness. We're going to see ruthless behavior. And we're probably even, unfortunately, going to see more violence. You know, gosh, I thought we've already seen it all. It's been unbearable, hasn't it? It's been just unbearable. But nope, we haven't. So don't ignore this transit and do something meaningful with the energy. Put powerful, good energy out there in the world on this day. Make sure you're not being too dominant or dominating. Make sure you're not being too selfish. Make sure your ego isn't trying to just get the upper hand. Keep your ego in check. Drive slowly. Let somebody cut in. Give another person, you know, the right of way, whether it's in the movie line or at a restaurant or driving down the street. Watch the news on this day. Be plugged in, dialed in. We need love. We need extra love on that day. So maybe you can be a force for goodness and love. And believe it or not, we end with the big giant Scorpio full moon. So if you are a Scorpio and you've got this full moon on, uh, on your sun sign, it will be an extraordinary day for you. If you're a water sign, Cancer or Pisces, it will also be a big day for you. And if you're an earth sign, it will be a big day for you. If you're fire or air, it might be a little bit of a tougher moon for you. So, you know, you're going to become really aware of your deepest desires. And there may be a bit of a struggle to fulfill those desires on this day. So we may need to let go of someone or something in order to get deeper, more meaningful desires, goals, hopes, and wishes met. In order to become more deeply fulfilled, we may have to say goodbye to something in our life. Um, be open to saying goodbye to a relationship or a person or an activity or, or something in your life that just might be too shallow for this particular transit because this full moon is asking you to deepen your connections, deepen your life, deepen your love to self and to others. This, this full moon is really asking you to let go of the superficial. Um, this full moon is a loyal, 
loyal, loyal, loyal full moon. So those people or activities that are not loyal to your highest best self don't deserve to be in your life. Cut them out. Get rid of them. And don't look back. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, put a comment in the section below. Feel free to ask me any question you like, and I'd be so grateful if you subscribe to my channel so you can get more of my videos. If you'd like a personal reading, you can always book a reading online any time of the day on my website at soulnavigation.com, S-O-U-L-navigation.com. See you soon.